Yeah. So much healthier now than he was when we first picked him. Oh. This used to be a crack house. Ooh, now let's see if he's got some leeches. What a beautiful little animal. Let's give it a bad bad. It's like a pancake with a head. Bubble bass, let that boy go. Oh, sweet wampum. I should be bottling this beautiful urine. Look at the baby and his little wife over there. Look at this, you guys. Kevin's sitting on his nest over there. Now with Rhea, the males are actually the ones that sit on the egg. And the females here just lay them. Oh my goodness, he looks like a pancake with a head. We got two types of male Rhea here on the farm. We have the little precious ones that I raised in my living room. And then we have the little evil ones that actually do a good job of protecting the egg. I remember when he used to do this in my backyard in Austin. This is really neat. It's the first time I've seen him do this in over a year. But now that he's showing this behavior, from now on, I'm just going to go ahead and let Karen lay her eggs here. And I won't be harvesting anymore. There is nothing more important than capybaras eating melon. But attention, capybara experts, I need your guys' help. Obviously, I think Kumala is a male because he was getting in a fight and I literally saw his ding -a -ling the other day. I'm pretty sure that that little nose thing means that he's a male, but please let me know in the comments, you guys, is Quandale Dingle a female or male? What do you think? Just from looking at his nose. I have a feeling that we might actually have all four males here, which is okay, but we are, we're gonna need to get him neutered if that's the case. Now, I've never seen Gort and Quandale fighting each other, but I have seen Kumala and Sylvester over there fight. For some reason, Sylvester just will not eat watermelon. Cringe, ah, uh, Sylvester. Oh, sweet wampum. Guys, this is the first time Kumala's ever let me pet him like this. And I thought for a while I had damaged my trust with him. Also, Sylvester's eaten over there, but I thought for a while that I had damaged my relationship with this adorable little fella just because I had to tackle him and spray that blue coat on him whenever he got injured. But this is Kumala. Look, there's his little wound and his little scar that he has. And now, oh my goodness. Oh, sweet wampum. Yeah! This is actually huge, you guys. You have no idea. For him to finally be friendly like this and let me just pet him, very, very, very big. And this is one of the ones that we actually rescued. We took in from those people that couldn't really take care of him anymore. Come on, buddy, let me scratch your belly. Once he experiences this, he's my little buddy for life. But Quandale probably still won't just let me pet him like that. Urban Rescue Ranch lore history right here, you guys. This is the first time Kumala has ever let me pet him like this. Look at that. What a beautiful little animal. Coming from the situation that these guys were in whenever we found him, this is huge for him to be able to just get this comfortable with me. I think it probably is because I helped him whenever he got injured. But all right, we'll leave these guys alone. Go check on the pond. And yeah, over here trying to yeah. eat my queso. These guys are working on the wetland filter, finishing it up. I even found this neat little insulation ball. All right, we're testing out the waterfall right now. We got our little arrow rock. It's working pretty well. We have some pretty good flow here. Hey, quit scaring my lamb. Sure is a lot of urine on these rugs nowadays. Oh, sweet wampum, I should be bottling this beautiful urine. Look at his little face. He's drunk from all the milk he been drinking. This man just walked right under his stream of pee. Just annihilated his bottle once again. Praise God, he is finally drinking it again. Still is favoring this foot a tiny, tiny little bit, but he's putting more weight on it every day. At least he's drinking like a champion again. Gustavo moment. I hope he doesn't attack my phone again. This precious little creature who's so much healthier now than he was when we first picked him. Oh! <laughs> healthy enough to do this, and uh, I don't think I'm bleeding from that. But he's obviously healthy enough to jump at me, and he gave me quite a little raspberry there. But he's still too small to actually really hurt me. And he won't be actually dangerous to me, at least, for another three, four years. Luckily, I always have this beautiful little thing of hydrogen peroxide in the kitchen, so I can just always clean off any little infections or bites that I get from Kevin. Kevin's bites are actually much worse. Look at this precious man. Sure is a beautiful thing to see. Bro, stop. All this man does is just drink and pee. Dude's got no personality. Good heavens, what a beautiful little man. These guys found this little garter snake out here. Look at this, guys. This is what it looks like when you get bit by a garter snake. Skip it about it. See? Doesn't really hurt too much. But I am probably going to bleed a tiny bit there. Skip it about it. Oh, look how cute that little guy is. He's focusing on the back of him. Beautiful snake. Oh, he's going up to the frog. I have confined the Kimpton in this kennel so this little fella can drink in peace. Such a precious little creature. Wow. The cichlid and our sunfish are doing really well. They're ready to go out to the pond when it's done. And Bubble Bass keeps eating all of his new friends. Check this out, guys. He just opens his mouth and vacuums it right in. 
Bubble Bass, let that boy go. Bubble Bass fellas be like. I also put live minnows in here for Gustavo. And to the three of you in the comments that are complaining about live feeding, this is very important for enrichment. Bubble Bass is going to have to eat fish in my pond eventually. And Gustavo here needs some kind of enrichment that isn't just me giving him a dead small rat every now and then. It's also cool for you guys to see how he went from being emaciated with metabolic bone disease to gulping down little minnows just like that. Also, look at my Discord kit here. Patrick Bateman's just peeing the day away over here while little fella can't keep i like to walk patrick bateman in here and this is where i feed the little fella meanwhile this little fella's just running around such a beautiful little creature why are you playing with my toes he loves to just walk up to him and poke his legs like that it's so annoying he gonna get kicked sooner or later doing that look how annoying this little fella is all right boys let's see it Ah. Beautiful. Even looks a little blue right now. Okay, guys, this is the end of the build. Take a look at this. We got Lamar out here from Prairie Creek Ponds and all of his crew. These guys did an amazing job. We also got Sean here from Aquascape. All these beautiful young boys, along with the guys from Pondscapes of Charlotte, came out and they did an amazing job of uh, setting this whole thing up. And they even took all the nasty excess dirt we had and did this amazing little landscape layout, which will eventually look great with all the Bermuda grass and other sod that we put down here. But this is the whole setup. Look at the baby and his little wife over there. Lamar, can you tell us what this is real quick? Yeah, so this is a wetland filter. It's basically like your body's kidneys for a pond. So it's gonna filter all the water, just keeps it crystal clear. There's beneficial bacteria so it's going to be good for the animal, the fish, the frogs, and just make a nice, healthy ecosystem. Excellent. But like we showed you guys earlier, this is about six feet deep almost. And we have these different layers of aqua blocks and gravel and other things that just filter this out. These guys also have a YouTube channel. They're going to be posting the progress. Go check it out. I'm going to link it in the description. We work with Sean and the guys from Aquascape uh, with getting all the different materials for all of this stuff. After months of bothering Greg, he gave us most of the material we needed for this. Thank you, guys. Obviously, you can't finish a project to this scope without making a couple little nicks in the trees and other things but ultimately the best thing that happened with all of this was all the trash that we did have around here from the oldie days when this used to be a crack house and a dump in the back here where these people would just dump all of their trash right here all of that is now covered completely with all of this clay. The fun thing now will be seeing how long this thing stays full and how much water we need to add to it every day in the hot Texas summers. But for the most part, this is a really great system and a good setup. And the bees are already loving it because they land on this little tree here and they can easily come in here and drink and then climb out with a log. But this is the whole setup, you guys. And Lamar, can you explain to us one more time, what is this little thing here? Yeah, so this is the intake bay. It's just like a skimmer. It just sucks all the debris in, gives you a chance to remove it before it falls down to the bottom of the pond and creates a bunch algae regular maintenance would just be sweeping all the nasty little things that are twirling around in here mm, delicious i see you guys have been taking care of my butt this one won't hatch because this one is a twin sometimes they'll hatch but it won't develop all the way that one's a blue egg hey you kids want to learn how to catch a little snapping turtle take a look at this you even know that i can see him look oh gotcha Got gotcha, your little snapper. Ooh, now let's see if he's got some leeches so we can eat them. <laughs> see this little leech on his back? We're gonna have to take this guy back and take these leeches off and rescue him. Get a little bit of diarrhea all over me, but take a look at this. This is the common snapping turtle, Chelhydra serpentia. And he's gonna make a great little addition to our pond. Seriously though, you guys, I'm amazed at how this pond turned out. These guys did an amazing job. Aquascape provided a lot of the material and Prairie Creek Ponds was amazing to work with. I highly recommend them if you guys are in Texas. But regardless of where you are, if you'd like a certified Aquascape contractor for one of your projects, click the link in the description. So by now, you guys have probably realized that I'm filming these videos a little bit earlier than I'm posting them. Oh, uh, but Uncle Ben, we want state-of-the-art instant updates of what's going on at your farm. Oh, no, you don't, because if old Uncle Ben had to do that, he would be so stressed out and cringe that you guys wouldn't even get to enjoy his content. Oh, also, we get to take in rescues and actually be stressed about them when they come. And when the rescues are here, I don't have to worry about rescuing them and filming them at the same time. And at this point, we've already rescued a couple doves, some pigeons. I caught 40 tree frogs last night, and we rehomed that adorable little kitten. And I got clips of all that stuff for you guys in the next video. But for my own mental health, health and sanity i'm not uploading these all as they happen because i love you guys and i love these animals i want what's best for them so how about y'all go on over hit that little subscribe and that like button <laughs>
<laughs> and I'll be over here gutting our trailer, turning it into a wildlife rehab office, and setting up 20 kennels on the property. There's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes here, guys. A lot of stuff you guys don't know anything about. So stay tuned. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos. And I'll see you in the next video. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you. Ah! Ah! Wow, look at this little man just running around here with bigger tin. They're playing. What an unlikely little friendship. Oh, here he comes. <laughs> look at these precious little creatures. Love you guys. Thanks again for watching.